The Common Uncommon. At the turn of the century, the art historian Christoph Grunenberg produced a case study on 20th century museums and art galleries and investigated the origin of the White Cube. Grunenberg wrote, seeking to bridge the gap between high art and popular appeal, seriousness of purpose and commercialisation, education and entertainment, the dilemma of modern art museums is undoubtedly an especially acute one. His conclusion was that the white space did not provide 20th century and now 21st century art and design with a neutral space for viewing. Moreover, the white cube is a dialogue with the historic ideals of modernism and within this context that visual art is viewed. By stating that museums need to provide new spaces and new temporalities, he suggested that the space a white cube provided was no longer adequate for a future gallery. In 2001, the architect Cedric Price, in a conversation with Hans Ulrich Obrist, said, I think that the notion of the classic museum still has a limited viability. I go to this wonderful distorter of time and place called the British Museum. This automatic distortion, whether of time or of place, when you visit a museum, is a good thing. This limited viability of the classic museum, its distortion of time and space, could perhaps be provided unlimited via the internet, harnessing augmented and virtual realities and interactivity. As a group, we have combined interests in the temporal and spatial nature of the digital, and we chose to investigate the parameters of a future gallery. To do this, we investigated a number of institutions and publications that have been experimenting with exploring how we view and consume visual art. For instance, the Victoria and Albert Museum have been using rapid response collecting since 2014 to archive significant moments where design has affected our world and to tell a story of how we live. The archive has a Western bias and among the items collected are a talking Barbie doll and a pussy hat worn by female protesters after Trump was elected. Items are photographed and recorded in a digital archive that is accessible to the public online and can be searched by their categories which include clothing, gender and sexuality, household objects and LGBTQ. The value in Rapid Response Collecting for this group project is to allow a flexible and individual approach to curating an exhibition and also a way we can celebrate the diversity and distance that we are as a group. We also investigated The Exposed, which is a cultural, political and arts magazine published with little text but full of images and with using a phone app can be scanned to reveal video, sound and text to enhance the experience and understanding of the reader. With this, our gallery theme came quickly, the theme of home. Gaston Bachelard asked in The Poetics of Space, transcending our memories of all the houses in which we have found shelter, Above and beyond all the houses we have dreamed we lived in, can we isolate an intimate concrete essence that would be a justification of the uncommon value of all our images of protected intimacy? This is the problem our gallery exhibition seeks to solve. Through rapid response collecting, we aim to curate a gallery located temporarily online and spatially in interactive print publication. The premise of concept is simple. What is home? A collection of objects and photographs of where we live and work, where we exist. A way to find common and uncommon elements between us, between people in different parts of the world. Bachelard wrote Poetics of Space in 1954. Much of his philosophy regarding the home or house remain relevant. Home is a shelter, home expands beyond the dimensions of the living space. And that once lived in, a building takes on a psychology of its own. Inhabited space transcends geometrical space. 65 years have passed since this book was first published and our world is different. Home today is dislocated from space. Global living, technology and disparate lives have disconnected our sense of home and belonging from real buildings and spaces. Although seeking an answer to Bachelard's question of uncommon value, our sense of home is much more a memory of images than perhaps Bachelard predicated. For members of our research group, this is of immediate significance. Current estimates are that there are 244 million international migrants globally. Through discussion with group members, it seems a commonality between us when thinking about home is not only a sense of deep loss and longing, but also a feeling of great joy and belonging. If this sense connects members of a group of strangers in different countries, that is to say our research group, 
then perhaps it is a common language that will enable a connection between a greater number of people. For example, Home, So Different, So Appealing, a travelling exhibition, in 2017 was shown at Los Angeles County Museum of Art, who described the deceptively simple idea of home as a powerful lens through which to view one of the most basic social concepts by which individuals, families, nations and regions understand themselves in relation to others. As part of this show, the audience was asked to submit to an Instagram gallery images of their own personal notions of home. Which brings us to audience. The audience visiting the V&A, including their rapid response collection, are motivated by learning. They are predominantly London-centric and interested in culture through experience, ages ranging from 25 to 44, slightly more female than male. This group also represents an opportunity for the V&A to connect with its audience through the use of mobile devices, whose associated content could be consumed at home. No data could be found regarding the exposed readership. Instead, we are using data for It's Nice That. It's Nice That promotes visual arts online, in print and through live events. It is a larger operation than the exposed. However, in 2015, the exposed was reviewed by It's Nice That, which recommended the exposed to its readership. It's Nice That audience is young, international and creatively engaged. A higher proportion of It's Nice That readers are middle class and university educated. Our gallery is not necessarily limited to this audience and its reach could be expanded. A model we could investigate is Positive Negatives, a charity organisation that produces web and print based illustrated publications, including educational resources for schools. They are interested in telling stories of children and their families caught up in war and poverty. Looking into this organisation's work may be valuable to our project in terms of an educational audience, as the Common on Common is a project that is essentially about empathy and learning. Also, using crowdfunding models such as Kickstarter and self-publishing frameworks, the visual research collected by our gallery might be published in coffee table compendiums, for example. After all, as Grunenberg says, a 21st century museum will utilise calculated uncertainty and conscious completeness to produce a catalyst for invigorating change whilst always producing the harvest of the quiet eye.